What's up guys, today we're going to be talking about some of the best older flagship smartphones that you can buy for around the $300 price point here. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with the OnePlus 9. Now, you can find these like locked to T-Mobile for $250 in an unlocked version you can easily find for around $300. And I absolutely love this phone when I uh, first got it. It has a pretty nice design on here. It does have a plastic frame uh, with a glass back, but it still remains, uh, has kind of like that premium feel to it. Uh, it is IP68 the T-Mobile version only though and then you also have a pretty nice display it's a 6.5 inch fluid AMOLED display it is 120 Hertz it's HDR 10 plus uh, with the 1100 nits peak brightness and it is also a 1080p panel 402 for the PPI so overall I really enjoy uh, the screen on here it's completely flat it has the punch hole gives off some really nice vibrant colors and I think uh, display wise everything is just silky buttery smooth running on top of Oxygen OS uh, so this does have Android 12 it will get the Android 13 update and this phone is very powerful it has the Snapdragon AAA processor and 128 gigs of internal storage and 8 gigs of RAM uh, so basically you are getting uh, still a very much capable flagship uh, device here as far as benchmarks as far as gaming performance um, I did a gaming test on this phone it does a phenomenal job when it comes to performance so basically anything you throw at it is going to be able to run at high settings not only that but I'm a big fan of Octogen OS I like how clean and how laid out uh, it is and um, this phone does have the stereo speakers on here the stereo speakers are uh, pretty nice pretty impressive good bass good mids the under the display fingerprint sensor does work really well on here so one of the highlights with this phone is actually the camera so they have a Hasselblad um, you know collaboration and it takes pretty good photos this is a 48 megapixel standard it has a 50 megapixel ultra wide I thought it took some very very impressive ultra wide shots and then you have a 2 megapixel monochrome uh, camera on here it shoots in 8k 30 with a 16 megapixel selfie that shoots in 1080p 30 I was pretty impressed with the image processing and the Hasselblad uh, you know color processing and all that good stuff you have the software in there as well too uh, I thought it was pretty good especially for the price that you're paying for this phone you get some actually some pretty uh, nice shots I think the, the pictures speak for themselves really and then this phone has really good battery life a 4500 milliamp battery I was able to get through a day no issue with this phone but what I absolutely loved about this phone it actually came with a 65 watt charger so this thing charges extremely fast I was really impressed with the charging speeds on here you also have wireless charging as well too um, so overall in general just a very impressive phone alright guys next is the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. This is another awesome phone that you can easily find around 300 bucks. This phone offers a lot of value for an older flagship phone. And honestly, some of the other things this phone has you can't really get on a lot of newer phones like the SD card support and stuff like that. Um, one thing I love about this design on here is that the uh, Aura Glow color on here is just really cool, very mesmerizing uh, color. I always get a lot of compliments on that. It has a a uh, very nice modern design for an older flagship phone. Aluminum frames, got a glass back. It's got the built-in stylus on here as well. It's IP68 dust and water resistant. I think the screen is still pretty top-notch on here. It's only really missing high refresh rate. It still has a dynamic AMOLED display. It's HDR10 plus at 1440p, 498 for the PPI, and it says 6.8 inch display. So it's very big, has very good screen to body ratio, beautiful colors, and basically it looks pretty much like the S22 Ultra screen still uh, might not be as bright but basically you it's really hard to tell the difference between these two screens besides the you know the high refresh rate uh, this phone did get its last major OS update Android 12 when UI 4.1 and it's been really smooth really great on this phone it is currently in its security patches uh, stages and you also have the Snapdragon 855 on here and honestly it's still very powerful it's much more powerful than people actually think uh, this phone still is able to play games at high settings Fortnite Call of Duty PUBG I did a gaming test if you guys want to check that out it did a phenomenal job uh, with gaming and one of the cool things about these chips is that they actually don't really overheat like that uh, you also have SD card support on here which is a very rare feature now you can really rarely find it in flagship phones these days it also has 256 gigs of internal storage and 12 gigs of RAM so you have plenty of storage plenty of RAM on this phone the stereo speakers are also pretty impressive on here you get a pretty loud sound very good bass quality good mids and highs on here and basically all of your additional features are still here as far as Samsung desktop support as far as all the One UI features as far as uh, the under the 
display fingerprint sensor is also very fast you can use uh, face unlock as well too so you're not really missing anything as far as the features uh, go now this phone does have a 12 megapixel standard, a 12 megapixel telephoto, it shoots in 2x, and then a 16 megapixel ultra wide, and then a 0.3 depth sensor. It also shoots in 4K 60 on the front and back, and it has a 10 megapixel selfie. Uh, as you can see from the shots, it still takes some pretty good photos, good dynamic range, good detail, very punchy, you know, sort of color on here. Um, I thought the images are pretty good for an older flagship phone. Now, of course, the newer phones, they got 108 megapixel and crazy zoom, but I think for the average person, who is just trying to take a point and click I think you'll be pretty happy still with the Note 10 Plus uh, image um, on here so also another thing about this phone is that battery life is still pretty good uh, I'm able to get around six hours of screen on time so it's really not bad at all it has a 4300 milliamp battery with 45 watt uh, wire charging which is really nice because it charges pretty fast and then you have wireless and reverse wireless charging on this guy as well too so overall it's just a very impressive phone like i said you can find this phone very cheap around 250 to 300 bucks all right guys next is going to be the iphone 11 so the iphone 11 is a very impressive phone um so i really do like the design on here still i think it's still more comfortable than the newer iphones because of the smoother edges it's got an aluminum frame it's got a glass back it's ip68 dust and water resistant and overall it's very easy to handle it's a 6.1 inch uh, display on here it is a uh, IPS display and it is a 720p plus display through 26 for the PPI overall it's pretty sharp display so I don't really have any issues uh, with the panel on here this phone also has the Apple A13 chip and I think that's pretty much the highlight with this phone this phone is crazy powerful still uh, benchmark wise it just still does a really great job even compared to some of the newer uh, Android phones here and it definitely shows when it comes to gamer gaming uh, performance and overall just general performance running iOS 16 it really just flies through it so uh, if you're somebody that needs an iPhone and you like to game uh, this is definitely a phone for you because it's just a super powerful phone uh, you also have 64 gigs of internal storage and 4 gigs of RAM uh, this phone does have pretty nice sounding stereo speakers as well too you get really good bass quality um, on here and overall just generally uh, loud out. Uh, you do have NFC and your face ID is on here as well that works uh, great so what I like about this phone is the cameras are still pretty good in my opinion on this phone it's a 12 megapixel standard and a 12 megapixel ultra wide it shoots in 4k 60 on the front and back and it has a 12 megapixel selfie cam uh, I thought the cameras were excellent uh, on here still they've aged really well um, like I said they're very close to the newer phones if you go ahead and watch that comparison um, and overall I really do like the images, good dynamic range, the ultra wide is pretty close to the main lens, and I think the pictures really speak for themselves. Uh, I think you get some pretty excellent image quality still uh, out of this older flagship. Now, this phone does have a 3,110 milliamp battery, and I'm able to get some pretty good battery life on mines, even though I have like 85% battery health. I can still squeeze about six hours out of this phone, um, so you do have pretty decent battery life. Uh, on the iPhone 11 depending on again your battery health and you also have wireless charging on here as well our right, next is a phone that I think is being seriously overlooked for the $300 price point the Galaxy S21 um, so I saw this on Amazon for like 288 and again these are USA prices guys uh, prices will vary based on the country um, but this is a very interesting phone, a very good phone, I think, for 288 Now, this one does have the plastic back and aluminum frame. I, I didn't think the plastic back was such a bad move when Samsung did it. Yes, it's not doesn't feel as premium, but again, when you buy these phones, you use, I always see these phones with cracked gla uh, back glasses. So I do I, I like the idea, but you know, a lot of people didn't, so that's why they switch. Um, but this phone does have a pretty good display on here it's a 6.2 inch dynamic AMOLED display it's 120 Hertz it's also HDR 10 plus at 1300 nits peak brightness and then you have 1080p resolution with 421 for the PPI overall beautiful display nice thin bezels punch hole it's the classic Samsung display that we love here this phone launched with Android 11 uh, on here so of course you're gonna get the latest Android uh, 13 one UI 5 on here you have the Snapdragon AAA processor on here so again this phone is extremely fast when it comes to your daily tasks like multitasking or gaming on here it'll be able to pretty much blow through anything that you throw at it you have 128 gigs of internal storage and 8 gigs of RAM this phone has stereo speakers 
speakers which sound pretty good great bass quality overall very loud and then of course you have all of your extras like the nfc the under the display fingerprint sensor is really fast and it has all the bells and whistles like samsung desktop support and all that good stuff on here i think the highlights are definitely the cameras on here you have some still flagship quality cameras on here it's a 12 megapixel standard with a 64 megapixel telephoto it does 3x and then you also have a 12 megapixel ultra wide it shoots in 8k 24 and then you also can shoot in 4k 60 on the front with a 10 megapixel selfie so overall the image quality is going to be beautiful on here it's pretty much comparable to the s22 i didn't see too much of a difference honestly so you're still getting top notch uh, high quality shots uh, with this phone which i think is really great this phone does have a 4000 milliamp battery 25 watt charging with wireless and reverse wireless charging uh, overall my battery experience was pretty good on here it's pretty much again like the s22 um, you know, pretty much you can squeeze around six hours of screen on time out of here. So I think this is a great bet for, uh, you know, $288. Honestly, it's a really good phone for that price. Now last is the Poco F3. This is not quite a flagship phone, but it does have a flagship kind of processor in it. So I wanted to go ahead and throw this one in here because I just really like this phone for all of my Xiaomi fans out there. Uh, so this one does have a plastic frame and a glass back. I really love the back texture on here. It feels really great. I think the design is still really awesome on here. It's IP53 dust and splash proof. And you also have on here a beautiful 6.67 inch AMOLED display. It's also 120 hertz. It's HDR10 plus and it gets up to 1300 nits peak brightness. And it is a 1080p panel, 395 for the PPI. Um, so basically, uh, this phone does have the MIUI. It has the Snapdragon 870, which is still a very powerful chip. Uh, this phone is just very fast running MIUI. Uh, honestly, gaming performance on here is pretty good as well, too. It's able to play games at a very high setting. So I was really impressed with uh, this phone here. As far as the specs, it has 128 gigs and 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, you do have these stereo speakers which sound pretty good pretty decent stereo speakers now i think one of the main things i use this phone for and which is underrated is the infrared port so this phone has an nfc and it also has infrared port so basically you can use this phone as a remote to control your tv air conditioner pretty much like smart appliances and stuff like that um it does an awesome job with that it's something that i really love i think it's very underappreciated uh, you know, just being able to use this phone as basically a universal remote. Uh, so I always have it on me. Uh, so you also have a fingerprint scanner. It's physical. It's side mounted to the side. Uh, that one is also good. It's very fast. It also feels very natural. Uh, I actually think the cameras on here are also pretty impressive. Um, you have a 48 megapixel standard, an 8 megapixel ultra wide, and a 5 megapixel macro. It shoots in 4K 30 with a 20 megapixel selfie cam that shoots in 1080 60. Uh, so basically, I thought the image quality was pretty good. Now, typically, I'm not a huge fan of Xiaomi cameras, but this one also uh, just blew me away, especially when they're like these type of mid-range, upper mid-range phones. Um, but the image quality, I thought was good. Good dynamic range, good detail. Uh, the macro was pretty nice. The ultra wide. Um, I was just pretty impressed. The selfies, I really liked on here. Also, uh, just the coloring on skin tones and stuff like that, like I said. I thought the uh, image quality was pretty good on this phone. Now, this phone has pretty good battery life. It's a 4,500 milliamp battery, um, and you have 33 watt charging. You also get that in the box as well. Uh, basically, you can, again, easily squeeze six hours of screen on time out of this one. It's definitely an all-day phone for sure. Uh, so I really do like uh, this phone, especially if the NFC, or not the NFC, but the infrared uh, interests you. I would definitely think about getting this. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.